Hey Battle Bill, here with another video, getting into some more Season 11 Go Battle League Battles, these taking place in the Great League meta. Today I'm bringing you a bit of a meta team that helped me gain ELO, so I'm help hoping it'll help you also. The team is centered around the lead of Shadow Kanto Ninetales with the legacy fast move of Ember instead of Firespin. The only way to get this fast move is by using Elite TM at this current moment, and Using Ember on your Shadow Canto Ninetales allows it to pick up matchups across the Great League meta, including the likes of Mandibuzz and Umbra. We're also running this Shadow Canto Ninetales alongside Metacham and Registeel so that we can perform pretty well against Walrein, Trev, Core. All three of our mons do very well against Walrein, Shadow Canto Ninetales performs very well against Trev, and even Registeel doesn't have that bad of a matchup against Trev, and the Metacham, of course, has the worst matchup, but at least has Ice Punch. Either way, I was able to do very well in this collection of battles. I have 10 for you today, so let's jump into them. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's begin the commentating. So we've got a Shadow Canto Ninetales on a Defense Deoxys lead. We're worried about Rockside coming from the Defense Deoxys, but what they decide to do here is build up to eight counters, which is the number for Thunderbolt. So we're allowing this to come through because we're not that worried about a neutral Thunderbolt. We also assume that Defense Deoxys, because they're so thick, won't shield. So we go for the big move there, but unfortunately the big move does get shielded there. So we then swap into our Metacham. We should have went into Registeel here just because of the fact that Registeel has a, a much better matchup against Defense Deoxys than Metacham does, or at least a better one. The Metacham Defense Deoxys matchup is weird, but this still works itself out because they come in with an Alolan Ninetales and we've lured it out so we can then farm the heck out of it considering the situation. So we're gonna come back in with our Kanto Ninetales to beat up on its sister version in the Alolo, Alolo region, and they're forced to throw a charge from there because they cannot charm us down. So then we come in with an even harder counter of Registeel on their Alolo Ninetales, and we're able to lock on farm their Mon completely down, fully expecting the Defense Deoxys to come back, and we don't want them to get off any moves at their current attack level. We want to make sure they're debuffed, so if they decide to throw a Thunderbolt, it will do even less damage. They then shielded that, and they come in with a wall rain. We already have a two-shield advantage. Them shielding that Defense Deoxys really kind of told us that they were really weak in the back two Registeel. In fact, they were. And we're going to go for the Zap Cannon on the wall rain, and we're going to one-shot it. We did get baited, but that wasn't that big of a deal because we had such a strong shielding advantage. The Defense Deoxys is going to get to another move here. I think we respect it and decide the shield. Yeah, it's a Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt would not have taken out the Registeel at this current health, but we're going to go for a Zap Cannon and we're going to take out the Defense Deoxys remaining health. And that is going to be GG's in match number one. You can also see my ELO to the right side is around the veteran ELO. I've definitely been kind of like hovering up and down. That whole Kanto Ultra Week was a really back and forth one for me. Some good days, some average days, some bad days. Hoping to turn things around in Great League, and this team has definitely helped me in the beginning of the meta. Getting into this next matchup, we have Shadow Kanto Ninetales against a Purified Sableye. The Sh uh, Sableye only needs to go for foul plays in this matchup. The Embers do chunk away, and as much as it's still not a super ideal matchup because Sableye just does so well against the Great League meta, we're able to play out the 1-0 shield and farm their Sableye all the way down and leave with energy. Unfortunately, they come in with Azu, so this energy that's on our Kanto Ninetales is not going to pay us many dividends, but because we're able to win lead and keep alignment, we're going to have our Registeel line up with the Azu instead of the Medicham. So because of this, we're going to be able to spam Zap Cannons on it, the first one will probably get shielded, and then they'll be debuffed, which is fantastic. They build up a bunch of bubble damage, but because a lot of Azus are running Ice Beam Play Rough, we're going to let the first one come through, not really believing that they were going to be running Hydro Pump. And they, in fact, were. But we don't mind. It's okay. It was still debuffed. We're going to second debuff them and see if they decide to shield. They decide not to. The Azus almost dead. We're hoping to shield their move and then lock on farm all the way down. They're coming through with another charge room now that we know they have Hydro Pump. Even though it's double debuffed, we're going to shield it. They then come in with a Skarmory. They do not let us lock on farm down. Here, I make a bit of a misplay. I do want to throw the Zap Cannon. Zap Cannon, this is not the misplay. We get their last shield, but they're building all the way up to a Brave Bird. I should have been counting and I should have tried to catch this on my Meta Gem so that my Registeel could have just come back in later and Zap Cannon. I was too confident thinking that Reggie would be able to survive that Brave Bird a little bit more comfortably and get to another move. I was not able to. I swap in my Meta Gem before I get farmed down. The Skarmory gets to another Brave Bird, but because they're debuffed from the Zap Cannon, so at least that pays dividends, our Meta Gem survives it, gets off an Ice Punch on the double debuffed um, Skarmory, and then the Azu comes in to finish us off, and our Reggie comes in to finish off the Azu's remaining health. One HP and a Dream Baby. We take those. Huge dub. Getting to the next matchup, we have Shadow Canto Ninetales on Registeel, the number one pick in the Great League meta, and our team also performs really well against that between Shadow Canto Ninetales and Metacham, and our only weakness would be the mirror matchup, and Registeels are all over the Great League meta these days. They save swap Sableye, we have to stay in here, but we don't mind that because it's a Registeel that's in the back, and a Registeel in the back, as long as we keep alignment, 
we can line up with our Medicham. So we're feeling okay with letting our Ninetales just stay in here and put in whatever work it can against the opponent's remaining team comp. We're gonna throw an overheat, not expecting the shield. It does hit pretty hard even though it's resisted. Altaria is a bit tanky, but overheat is a very good move. They decide to respect it in shield. We come with Registeel because we have alignment. We're sitting in a fantastic spot here. Altaria can only do so much against a Reggie. They decide to swap in their Reggie, thinking that we didn't have another answer for it. And we come in with our Medi and they realize this match is over. And it's GG's and they decide the top left. Getting to this next matchup, we have a very weird matchup of Shadow Canto Ninetales on Arachnid. It's a fire type against a water bug type so all our moves are neutral whereas their fast move is resisted they're going to throw super effective bubble beams bubble beams not the best move but it does debuff us and it is super effective also the goal in this matchup is to build as close as you can to the overheat but because the arachnid gets the bubble beam before we get there you need to throw the weather ball first this matchup is also pretty sure iv dependent because there have been situations where my nine tails was able to take out their arachnid and there's been situations where i played it out the same way and the arachnid took out my nine tails they decide not to fully play that out they're worried about getting farmed down so they save swap into swampert we come into medi and our goal is to counter the heck out of them we also need to commit here we are aba weak to swampert we're not seeing that many swampert leads but we do see a bunch of swampert save swaps so it's great to have medi in the back to deal with them we're going to spam up these ice punches because that's all the damage we're going to need against the swampert they decide to shield the first one we play in the cmp by mistake on the second one because we were hoping that if we threw our move before they threw their move we'd get their last shield unfortunately we're not able to do that but we still get their last shield regardless they then save swap or not save swap swap back into their register seal we come in with our nine tails gonna get off some weather ball damage here we're gonna get lock on farm down so we cannot get to the overheat we were super close they are able to lock us lock on farm us down but our nine tails is able to put in a chunk of work against their register seal we were hoping they would not throw right away so we're countering hoping to get to an ice punch they go for a zap cannon take out our medi and based on the way we played this we're not in the most ideal situation we probably should have played out the reggie mirror considering the circumstances but we will survive a focus blast coming through from the red seal but trying to outpace them hoping that we'd win cmp we end up not winning cmp and cmp tying them so that stunk they come back in with a swampert and this is ggs at this point i really shouldn't have tried to um hope to outpace their red seal i should have just taken the the l on the focus blast hitting us lock on farm down hit the swamper with a focus blast and i can't remember if their arachnid had a little bit of health maybe we'll be able to lock on farm it down so we might have essentially thrown there which is unfortunate but you live and you learn and it's important to still showcase those battles so that we can all learn from them getting into this next matchup we have nine tails on a wolverine lead nine tails does play that match about well because the only thing in the two shield that the nine tails to worry about is the earthquake so the opponent save swapped into sableye we're playing out the one shield against them we've cmp tied here again we are going to commit to this matchup just based on the pure fact that we don't want sableye seeing our back line and we would love to commit to alignment but even alignment's not the end of the world because both of our mons in the back will slaughter the wolverine they decide they'd rather have the one shield o shield uh advantage here but we're gonna go for an overheat that will either take a huge chunk out of defense the oxygen health or get their last shield it does get their last shield they commit to a counter down but because reggie can play this matchup really well we should be coming in with that and it can eat all the charge moves a little bit better than meta Jam can because again of course reggie being tanky and all that the thunderbolts don't do much and we resist the rock slides and psycho boosts if they were running either of those mat, uh, moves, which the Medicham has to worry about the psycho boost. They do get to another Thunderbolt there. We are going to get to a Zap Cannon with the lock on damage. This is going to take out their Defense Deoxys remaining health. Almost 1 HP. We swap in Medi onto their Wall Ring. And this is the Zero Shield in this match. It's essentially GG. The Wall Ring can Icicle Spear and Earthquake us, or at least try to, but it's not going to be able to. They don't even get off a move there, and they decide to top left because they know their DD has one hp left ggs brother on sister uh damage or sister on sister from you know another region sister from another mister type of business with canto nine tails going up against the alola nine tails obviously the alola nine tails wants to run away our back line is a little bit worried about the alola nine tails but as long as we can commit to alignment with their sableye safe swap we can line up the redis still against their um 
Oval and Ninetales and still be in a comfortable position. So they decide to play out the one shield. We end up winning the one shield situation with them safe swapping. They come in with a Diggers B and we like how things are going to line up here. They're going to get a bunch of farm on us, but because they're getting so greedy, our Canto Ninetales is able to get to an overheat. Would have been a big boom, but we get their final shield, which is still huge. They're going to come into a farm down, but we have Medi that's going to still hard counter the Diggers B. We still have a shield. Even if they EQ us, we can tank one. We can also shield one. We just want to make sure we don't get baited. Then we get into a fire punch and double eq is not super likely and we're fully expecting them to swap but because of the fact that they had not gotten off the second earthquake we try to play in the cmp and it works itself out so they're going to get to an eq after we land the ice punch their diggers b is plenty low enough that our registeel can handle the rest of this matchup and it's gg now it all depends on how the opponent decides they want to play it out and they decide the top left again so what i really liked about this team is that we could win leads force a save swap and then this team was still pretty comfortable against our opponent's save swaps to win out these matchups running into this next matchup we have another positive lead with shadow canto ninetales on their venusaur they save swap a stun fisk which still isn't a bad matchup for our ninetales but medi plays a much better one we are going to respect the eq here for a couple reasons it's going to do a good chunk of damage to us but now we can commit to a counter down and when they come in with their venusaur we're going to be able to lay out a ton of damage on it whether we decide to throw a psychic or bait with ice punch they do learn land an earthquake there they come back in with the venusaur after we take out their stun fisk we're going big for the psychic seeing if they decide the shield here they do decide to respect the Psychic and Shield. We're hoping to build up to another one. They respect the damage man champ can do, and they decide to throw their move. Our back line, though, does really well against their Venusaur. So it all comes down to what their third and final Mon is, and it's a super old popular team of Venusaur Double Tank, which, hey, let it have some more relevance because this current comp that we're running against it... Oh, yeah, I got a little toxic here. I forgot about this. Uh, sorry man i was getting frustrated this team was so old and so popular and runs so much that I was like you know what you're deciding to play a losing battle here where we slaughtered you in the lead slaughtered you in the swap and slaughtered you in the end game and you've decided that you still have a chance so you're gonna notice i kind of bm quite a bit i don't do this too often but i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna definitely embrace it considering the circumstances listen if you're gonna stay in a matchup where you have no chance and you're literally just wasting my time and your time even when you pull off a dope swap because they caught the focus blast on the venusaur i'm gonna bm and i'm gonna play around a bit they decide to come back in with the venusaur doesn't even get off a move nine tails farms it down they come in with the basset on they're really praying and hoping that that catch even after all my bms is gonna give them a win con and it still doesn't because we overheat there they're not gonna be able to get the two charge moves so we ember down and nine tails is a basset on counter confirm fire counters rock easy clap you love to see it also shout out moki my cat hanging out in the background uh they were quite hyper before i don't know if you're gonna get more appearances from them but ironically running into this next matchup i'm now in the reverse situation so if you want to see somebody getting karma this is the definition of insta karma and i play it out a little bit i don't play this one out completely i want to at least see the third mon that's what the other opponent did too we lost lead we're also aba weak to swamper we hardcore lost swap so it felt like i was getting sniped a little bit i was hoping to have a play here where i could lock on farm down the nine tails completely and in the two shield situation with a bunch of extra energy maybe beat the swamper if they don't have a registeel counter and they decide to come back in with the swamper we're gonna see in just a moment so i'm trying to find a win con here but I go for the Focus Blast. It does get their shield. I'm hoping again to outpace. I'm also hoping that if I call a Hydro Cannon that my Register will survive enough to then uh, outpace. I didn't know if I need, like, I didn't realize in the moment that Hydro Cannon was going to do enough in my current health with the Mud Shots I was going to be screwed. I thought I had to make sure I didn't get EQ'd. And unfortunately, because of circumstances, even letting the Hydro kind of come through. I'm going to top left soon. I was toxic and decided to shield there. They got off another move here. I decided to let this one come through because I know this is going to be GG's. And then, yeah, all right, yeah, there we go. <laughs> And their last one was a weekly tough, which is annoying because if I would have played out that Registeel matchup against Swamper better, I could have had a chance of winning there. But I unfortunately let that Hydro Cannon go. I don't think I would have necessarily outpaced them to two more Focus Blasts and then taken them out before they got to the two more Hydro Cannons they would have needed based on my shield scenario. But you know what? 
That was a closer matchup than the one I BM'd in, but you know what? If my opponent decides to BM me back because I'm being just as stubborn as my other opponent, then I deserve it, and it's, we keep the same energy. All's fair in love and war. Getting to this next matchup, we did not have a great lead. We save swap in the meta champ. They decide to stay in the Azu matchup a bit, and they come up with a Shadow Alola Marowak, which I respect. They seem to be going for a fire spin down, and I'm hoping that even though this Ice Punch is resisted and our counters are double resisted, we'd be able to take out and flip switch. Unfortunately, we're not able to. I'm forced to come in with my Shadow Canto Ninetales because of the fact that it does not have a good matchup against their last mommy in the Azu. I also didn't realize that Shadow Bone was going to take us out at that health, but you know, Shadow Alola Marowak goes kind of hard. And I think there's a TM event coming up like this weekend. If you did not TM your Shadow Alola Marowaks last time when it was available, highly recommend you do it now. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm staying in this matchup, considering I'm getting relatively hard countered here too. But you know what? Registeel on Drapion is not a terrible matchup for the Registeel until it crunch goddamn debuffs us there, which was far from ideal because we resist all these poison fangs, so it's not like the fast room damage is really adding all up all that much. It's more of now the crunch damage that's adding up a bunch. And then them getting a debuff, which was super unfortunate. So after I recognize the debuff, I'm like, let me zap cannon to try to even things out. Problem is it kind of puts our uh it puts it sets my energy back a bit which is super unfortunate they then decide to swap out to clear their debuff so that they can still match my registeel's energy debuff and then i'm really just hoping and praying that i can build up to 100 energy and get off two moves but i know the drapion has too much energy and even though i zap cannon the azu there this is going to be ggs i don't even think a focus blast would kill the drapion from this health what i could have done a little bit differently would be a focus blast the azu and then lock on farm down so that i was in that drapion matchup with um a full amount of energy for another charge move but i don't think it would have taken out but that would have been like my only potential win come getting to this next matchup we scare another wall rain to lead it away they come back in with the sableye and we're going to obviously play this matchup out because our backline does not want to see sableye also our backline loves seeing wall rain so all we're hoping for is to play out even shielding or even uneven e uneven shielding that's a tongue twister and leave with alignment that's what we care most about. They decide to double commit shields. I'm hoping and praying that they're not at two moves here. So I do decide to shield here. And I learned the hard way that even on the save swap, because Sableye wins CMP, it's able to catch up and essentially win this two shield matchup against my Shadow Ninetales. But then we come in with Medi, and because their Sableye is lacking energy because they had to throw right away, this is not the worst case scenario for us. Medi was able to farm down without taking much damage. They come in with a Shadow Drapion, which is not a bad matchup for our uh, Meta Champ. They did not want to come with a Wall Ring because obviously they'd be taking super effective damage. They're going to crunch us a bit here. And then they had one play to win this, and they made it. So shout out to this opponent. Very well done. High respect for them even making that play. And then I'm like, crap, I kind of need a charge move against their Drapion. It hopefully didn't leave with the move because the Medicham does not win um, CMP against the Drapion. So I left. I, I stayed in that matchup a little bit longer than I probably would have preferred so I could have an Ice Punch. I come in with Reggie. It eats an Earthquake, but I'm still able to get to another Focus Blast before... They're able to get off another EQ, and now my only hope is that they're not able to get two crunches. I was super close to a charge move. They recognize that. They had to throw, and they are not at their second charge move, so we get to the Ice Punch before they do, and we're going to take out the Drapion's remaining health. Shout out to this opponent because they got hard countered pretty hard here, and they almost played it out, and that is the last match of the set. So out of 10 battles, we went 7-3. and three. I gained, like I said, about 100 ELO. I'm sitting like around the 2600s now, thanks to this team. I'm going to try my best to find some more meta teams and hopefully continue to climb in the Great League meta and hopefully not have another bad week like I did during the Ultra and uh, Kanto time. But please, send me your battles. I'm open to Great League content and Mass League content during this week because I think we had enough with the Ultra League last week. Link for submissions is in the uh, description of this video. Please let me know your thoughts on the team comp. Please let me know your thoughts on the battle. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.